This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to recover this bar stool with a new upholstered top that includes piping not only on the top, but also on the bottom of the stool. We've already removed the old fabric and foam and we'll replace it with a new beautiful fabric that we've chosen. Here's Cindy to show us how it's done. Uh, we're going to work on this bar stool today and make a cover with a band on it and some piping. So the first thing I need to do is measure around the, or measure across the diameter of the bar stool and it's 12 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut my fabric pieces at 13 and a quarter because I'll need a half an inch for a seam all the way around and I'm going to cut my foam also at 13 and a quarter. Okay, my measurement was 13 and a quarter and I want to cut my uh, foam that same size. So I'm going to mark the center at six and five eighths. And then I'm going to make a circle on my foam piece and cut around it. We'll show this in double time. We've chosen to use Fairfield Polyfill New Foam. This is a compressed polyester. However, if you'd like, you can use a polyurethane foam that's also available at Sayerite. This is a two inch thickness. A full materials list is found at the end of this video. I use the scissors, I'm going to take it and divide it in half. So I'm only cutting half the thickness at once and just follow my marks all the way around the circle. When cutting compressed polyester, we find this process much easier than cutting the full thickness all at once with scissors. And then go back and cut it again, the rest of the thickness. If you're using polyurethane foam, an electric kitchen knife works well for that, but not for compressed polyester. So you can see that my um, foam piece is a little bit larger than my, the top of my stool, and it's going to compress when I put the fabric on it. Now to determine the, the depth of my band, I'm gonna measure the foam and the base of the bar stool, and it's two and a half inches. So I'm gonna add a half an inch for the seam up here and an inch or so to pull it down and around underneath the bottom of the chair. So two and a half plus one and a half is four. So I want to cut my bands four inches wide. Sayerite often refers to bands as boxing. Because I have a pattern on this fabric, I'm going to straighten up this edge so that my band is the same uh, pattern all the way across. So all I'm doing is cutting along the weave of the fabric at the top of the pattern so that my first band will be the right depth and it will be even on the pattern. You'll find thousands of decorative fabrics to select from at www.sayright.com. And I'm going to cut this across the full width of the pattern and then just make it to size when I sew it on. The length of the band or facing or sometimes referred to as boxing should equal the circumference of the chair plus about five inches. And now I'm going to cut the circles for the very top of the stool and I'm going to find a center point again like I did on the foam and on this piece I want to center one of these little circles. And I'm going to measure a circle again at six and five eighths from that center point. We'll show this again in double time. Marking a circle this way on the foam and also on this fabric is tedious and cumbersome. In a few seconds, Cindy will show using the Sayerite Canvas Patterning Ruler, which I highly recommend in lieu of doing it this way. And then I'm going to cut on my lines all the way around that circle also. Another way to draw this circle is to use this Canvas Patterning Ruler. And it has a hole right here. And I would put my pin in that hole and then put my pencil in one of these holes out here that corresponded to the size of my circle. And then I could draw a circle with this ruler. Using this tool, it is much easier. So there's a couple different ways that you can make your circles. So I'm gonna cut around the lines that I drew to get my circle. So there's the circle for the top of my bar stool. And the other thing that I need to cut is the bias 
for the cording. Coming up next, Cindy will show you how to make cording, or sometimes referred to as piping. We're going to make it ourselves. And I'm going to cut it on the bias because it'll stretch easier. It'll go nicer around the circle because it has a little bit of stretch to it. And when I make my cording on the bias, I use uh, this ruler and line up the 45 degree line along the selvage edge of the fabric and draw a line. And this is my bias cut. And my cording needs to be an inch and a half wide. If using a rotary cutter, there's no need to mark it with a pencil and cut it with scissors. We'll demonstrate that in a few seconds. So I'm going to draw lines with the rulers to, to um, get enough cording to go around the stool twice. Since we're covering the top side and the bottom side of the stool with piping, we need enough to go around the circumference plus about five inches. Then take that times two since we're doing both top and bottom. There is another way to cut this uh, bias that's a little bit simpler. I'm going to fold this in half so it fits on my um, rotary cutting board and use this cutter to cut my strips. As you can see using the cutting mat, the rotary cutter, and the clear acrylic ruler, it's much easier to cut bias piping. After all the strips are cut, we need to join them together. Cindy will demonstrate that now. I need a 45 degree angle at the end and I'm going to lay those right side up, both of them right side up and cut my angle again. I want to cut the selvage edge off because it's a little bit thicker than the rest of the fabric. After I cut the angle I'm going to turn the top one over so now I have right sides together and pin those together and when I stitch I'm going to stitch from this angle to this angle and I'll have a continuous length of bias. Let's demonstrate that one more time by joining yet another piece. Both are laid right side up. Cut the 45 degree angle, then pin them together as done previously. Using the clear acrylic ruler, you can see the 45 degree angle on the ruler easily. So I'm ready to take this over to the machine and stitch these three little seams and apply the cording inside it. I'm going to stitch this little short seam together. We're using home decor fabric. Many home sewing machines can sew it, but we want to demonstrate the Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine. It's a walking foot sewing machine, great for light applications like this, but exceptionally well built for heavy applications. This is a great sewing machine that'll do a phenomenal job for your upholstery applications. So I have one continuous long straight piece of bias cording. And now I'm going to put the cording in. So I'm just going to lay it in the center and fold it over and put it under the foot. And there's a tunnel on the foot that's going to carry this through. The Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine and the LSZ sewing machine both have a cording tunnel built right into the foot. No need to change out the foot to a cording foot. If you're using a home sewing machine, you may have to do that to sew this piping. And when I come to one of my seams, I want to finger press that open like that so that when it folds over, all of that thickness isn't folding back on itself. Coming up next, we'll apply this piping or cording to the top plate or the top of the stool. Cut this off straight at the beginning. And I'm going to lay my two edges even and put it under the foot and the foot is going to guide the cording around my circle. I'm going to start a couple inches from the beginning of my cording so I can tuck the end back in there. By leaving a few inches at the end, we'll find it much easier to join the opposite end of the piping to this, the beginning end of the piping. She'll be showing you that next after we sew around the perimeter. When I get back to where I started, I'm going to give myself uh, two or three inches beyond um, the end of my first piece and cut it.
And then I'm going to open up the stitching on this end. Following this technique is a great way to join the ends of piping together. I think you'll agree after you see the end results. And cut the cording off where those two meet. Just the cording. And I'm going to fold the, the piece I'm sewing towards at an angle like that and tuck this beginning piece back in, side it, and wrap that over it. Now we can apply the band, sometimes referred to as boxing or facing, to this assembly. And then I'm going to apply the band, the four inch band that we cut around the circle also. And I'm going to start uh, close to where my, where I joined the cording, not right on it because that would be a lot of thickness right there, but I'm going to start close to it so that both of these uh, seams end up in the back of the stool. And I'm also going to start a little bit away from the edge on that. And I'm going to stop back about four inches from where I started. Stopping short will allow us to join the band or boxing together. And match these up and uh, make a seam right here. And put a clip. The clip indicates where we need to sew to join the boxing strips together. And trim all this extra off beyond my clip. My clip is up here. We only need to leave about a half inch of material beyond the clip. And then I can match the clips up and sew this seam. Starting at the clip and straight down. Now that it's joined together, we can finish sewing the boxing to the main assembly. And I'm also going to press that open so it's not too much thickness all in one spot and go back to where I stopped right here and finish that seam. Coming up next, we'll push our foam inside this cover and test it on top of our bar stool. I'm going to stick this piece that we cut inside here and see how it fits on my uh, stool before I go any farther. And it looks like uh, our foam is just a little bit too big. We've got some lumps here, so I'm going to take it off and cut it smaller. Um, regular poly foam would compress, I think, better than this. This one isn't, so we're just going to trim it off a little bit. Cindy believes it'll look better if the foam or the compressed polyester that we're using is cut a little bit smaller. And I'm going to cut off about a half an inch all the way around my circle. Now she'll reinsert the foam in the cover and place it back on the chair to see how this looks. And when I put this on, I want to make sure that all of my seam allowance is going down towards my band and not up towards the top of the seat. So I'm working to push that down before I pull this on. That looks awesome. Now we need to staple it to the bottom side of the chair. We're going to use the Easy e tc 8 pneumatic stapler. Now I'm ready to staple this down onto the base of the bar stool. And I'm going to use a, a stapler, air compressor stapler for that. So I'm just going to pull my band down and go 
side to side and front to back and make sure that I have everything in place where I want it before I staple the whole thing down. You don't necessarily have to have a pneumatic staple gun like this to accomplish this task. You could use a heavy duty aero staple gun that uh, is just uh, hand operated. Before stapling, always ensure that you like the look. And if you need it tighter, you can pull out those four staples easily and make adjustments. Cindy likes the way it looks, so she's going to continue to apply staples, applying the same amount of tension on all sides. With this staple gun, we're using approximately a 3 8 inch long staple. And I'm clipping that just so it'll go around the leg. We could just trim the rest of the fabric and not apply piping or cording to the bottom side of the chair, but adding piping or cording to the bottom side makes it look even better. Okay, I'm going to trim this extra fabric out so it doesn't hang out when um, you're using the bar stool. You don't want to look at this extra fabric underneath here. We've made plenty of piping or cording, and we're going to add a strip to the bottom side of the chair. That's coming up next. And then I want to apply another row of cording around the bottom, like this. And I'm going to start that also at the same place where my seam is, back here. And put a few staples to hold that in place all the way around. And then I'm going to go back over it with the cardboard tack strip to hold it in place. When I come around here to where I started, I'm going to cut it off about three inches longer and open up my stitching. And then just cut the cording even with the, the beginning. Fold this back, tuck the beginning in, and fold it over. Then I'm going to go back over all of that with the cardboard tack strip, and I'm going to clip the cardboard tack strip about two-thirds of the way up so that it will curve. This cardboard tack strip just keeps that piping pushed out so it stays nice and firm. So this is going to hold the cording in place so it has a nice firm edge. Those are the steps required to reupholster a bar stool. And here's the finished bar stool. Coming up is a materials list and the tools that were used to reupholster this bar stool. You can order these at Sailrite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support.